Well, he won his Senate race as an independent, but he's not exactly thrilled with the Democratic Party. So who will Senator Angus King vote with? That's the question. Well, the independent U.S. Senator from Maine joins us now this morning. Good morning to you, uh, Senator. So this is the, uh, the big question. Where will you go? Will you listen to the voters, the will of the people, and caucus with the Republicans? <laughs> Hey, I always listen to the will of the people, but that doesn't necessarily mean where I'm going to caucus. Uh, I made a decision last week that I think Maine is better served by having a senator in both camps. Of course, Susan Collins is in the, in the Republican caucus, so I decided to uh, stay with the Democratic caucus. But you, you, you said two very important things. You said caucus, and then you said how will you vote. I vote the way I think. I vote what I think is right and what is best for Maine and the country. Caucusing is who you have lunch with on Tuesdays and who you vote with to organize the Senate. But the, the key question is, how do you make your decisions? And uh, I'm going to make them just mm. as I have all along. My political philosophy is I call them as I see them. Mm. Right, Senator, you were mm. not in the Senate when they voted on Obamacare. And I wonder what you would have voted on then, especially after, and what you would vote on now after you hear this. One of the architects, Jonathan Gruber, was caught on camera saying this at the University of Pennsylvania. And I, I put in brackets the stupidity of the American voter. Let's listen. This bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Okay, so it's written to do that. In terms of in terms of risk rated subsidies, if you had a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit the healthy people pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. So it's kind of like his reporter story. You know, yeah, there's things I wish it could change, but I'd rather have this law than not. So he's basically saying that he didn't tell the truth when the law was passed. Neither did Democrats when they put it forward. Your reaction to that? Are you as outraged as most of America? Well, he shouldn't. I don't know what he was talking about. I certainly don't endorse those kind of comments, but I can recall that debate. I wasn't in office, but it was a very vigorous debate. Everybody knew that there were going to be additional taxes required to support uh, the support for premiums under the Affordable Care Act. I don't I don't see it as any deep, dark conspiracy. There were all kinds of there. Was really? A he said he wasn't transparent. Senator, he said well, he wasn't transparent. He wasn't telling the well, truth. Yeah, who was he? I mean, I, I don't know where he was in the process. There were hundreds of people it. involved in that process. He's the architect of Obamacare. He's, he in fact, it. the one, one that put it together, one of them, well, and said, in fact, that they didn't weren't transparent and forthcoming with the CBO, because if they were, then the American people would know that, in fact, this was going to be something that was going to tax and penalize them, and then they wouldn't go for it. Well, that let, is duplicitous wait a minute, wait a minute. on its Tax face. and penalize? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We've got 8 million people that have insurance now that didn't before, and don't lecture me about this, because 40 years ago, I had insurance. If I hadn't had it, it caught a cancer that saved my life. If I hadn't had insurance, I'd be dead. It has to do with it. To do with the, it does. It August. has to do with the. It has to do with having insurance, man. If you don't have insurance, it's a it's a high risk. They so just we lied get about a, They just lied about a health plan to the American people, called the stupidity of the American voter, and Listen, bragged this about is the one lack guy. of transparency. This is one guy. I don't know who this guy was. He's All I know is that it's important for people to have health insurance. And if you guys are saying people shouldn't have health insurance, I don't know where you're coming from. Are you, saying, are you so. that cruel? That is no, what you're saying. Oh, my goodness. We're not cruel. We're just looking on, out for the right, facts and right, the information. Right now, through the Affordable Care Act, uh, 7 million have uh, insurance, many for the first time. They were expecting 13 million next year. Looks, so, According to the latest estimate, it looks like it's going to be le less than that. Uh, Senator, I did want to ask you about one of the things you said yeah. yesterday, and that you said that one of the messages of the midterms was that the Democrat Party has become the party of government itself. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is I think the Democrats often, too often, look for governmental solutions and feel that every problem has to have a governmental solution, and particularly a governmental solution from Washington. The other side of that, of course, is that the Republican parties become the party of starved government, and sometimes you've you got to find a way in between. We're not even filling our potholes now. We, the, the, the highway fund is broke. 
And, and that's just not responsible. So we've got, it's got to work both ways. I think the Democrats are too often ready to have a governmental solution. I think the Republicans are too often ready to say, well, we don't need government. It's not important. It, the truth is we've got, we've got to find the right balance. And that's what I'm trying to do. And there are people here in Congress who want to do that. He is the independent senator from the great state of Maine. Senator King, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Always a pleasure, guys. All right.